Well, hello there, Touch Designer Programmers. Matthew here. So, um, I, got, I saw a really great question show up on the forum the other day, and uh, I figured it might be a really good time to uh, demystify a few things about uh, one of the great components this here instead of Touch Designer called the Stoner, uh, and unpack some of the uh, exciting, lesser known tips and tricks you can take advantage of when working with this particular operator. Or excuse me, this particular uh, component from the palette. Now, uh, we're going to look at a kind of use case scenario where I'm going to assume a bunch of other things are set up in your project. We'll kind of build just some base bones pieces. Um, but we're really going to focus today on taking a look at how we can take better advantage of some of the palette tools that exist. Uh, and there are features that we might not necessarily have a complete and total understanding of, how we can better exploit some of them. So let's dig right down into it. So the question that I saw show up is that uh, with Stoner, I'm going to start by clearing out my network. And over here in the palette, I'm going to go ahead and grab from Tools here at the bottom. There's Stoner. So the question was, you know, in Stoner, if we take a peek inside here, we have this thing called Project. And in this thing called Project, we have all of this like crazy rigmarole. And because this toe file, excuse me, because this top texture operator is locked, it means that when we save this toe file, it's going to become ginormous. Because we're going to end up with this thing, right, this texture size. Uh, which is, this is 7 megs, but this is only, I think this is 1280 by 720. That's going to add up fast, especially if we're using something like GitHub, right? We're going to end up with a repo size that just kind of balloons really crazy, uh, really fast. So first of all, what on earth is all of this rigmarole? Do we need it? And is there a better way to take advantage of Stoner? So, you know, I would say it's not uncommon when I've looked at projects to see something like this, right? You've got uh, some arrangement of displays, like let's say that we have um, we have four projectors, and for right now we'll just sell their 1280 by 720, two, three, four. Great, we've got four of these things. We might imagine, right, that we've got a container that we're going to stick all of these inside of. For now, I'm just going to use hierarchy to kind of make this work really quickly. 1280 times 4, right? So 5120 by 720. Great. And we might imagine that we have a different video file, or we're thinking of these as separate channels, even if we're doing something clever in terms of how we're uh, actually going about the business of arranging some of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and Add a few of these right now to get us started. Point three, four. You know, we could imagine this is one big file that's chopped up into segments, or it might be separate movie files. Regardless, um, I think the the bigger point here is that usually what I see in projects is that if you've got four channels here, and if I want to map these, say like, I want this to be my background top. It's going to be my background top, my background top, and my background top. Great. And up here, if I wanted this to be arranged left to right, great. So one, two, three, four, there's our four channels. Usually what I see is something like this, right? If these are projectors, I often see this kind of idea that, well, you know what? What I need is I'm going to need a stoner per channel, so this gets a stoner, and this is now what gets, goes over here, and this one gets a stoner, and this goes over here now, great, and this one gets a stoner, marvelous, all right, everybody gets their own stoner. Now the, the challenge here where this gets really uh, tricksy so let's go ahead and let's rearrange our workspace just really briefly. I'm going to put a panel viewer down here, and I'm going to make sure that container 5 is what we're looking at. So we can kind of see all of that stuff all at once. OK. Slick. OK. So if we use an individual stoner for each one of these channels, 
And if we come out here and take a look at our cook time, that's almost four, you know, four to five milliseconds just by itself. And that adds up quickly because each one of these stoners, right, is uh, almost 0 0.6, 0 0.7 milliseconds uh, by itself. So, you know, and that's just at uh, 1280p. If we, you know, knock that up to 4K, well, you know, we're going to end up with uh, operations that get expensive very quickly. And on top of that, when I go to save this project, I've got these four stoners in here, and now I'm going to have a tow file that's ginormous. Bluff. You know, I got a, I got a, a bunch of problems. I got 99 problems, but my tow file is certainly one of them right now. What do I do about all of this shenanigan? Well, handy for us to know is that there is actually this extra little uh, parameter here on our stoner called a project, and there's this second output. So first things first, what is that second output? I'm going to go ahead and clean up my network here. We're going to rebuild a whole bunch of this stuff, so there's no reason hold on to any of this at the moment. What's the second output? Well, let's go ahead and hook up a null. And if we connect a null operator to this, we should be able to see that uh, we have some weird ramp situation here. Okie dokie. Uh, what gives? Why is that important? Well, if we go ahead and turn on our interface here, I'm going to make this viewer active with A, and I rearrange some pieces here, right? So this is just me doing my little keystoning operation. Oh my god, look, it's the most beautifully calibrated projector ever. Okay, so this looks, uh, you know, reasonable so far. What's this thing down here? Well, what that is, if we can actually use this UV map with a remap top. So with our remap top, we might, for example, go ahead and grab this texture. And if we take a peek here, we've got a source image goes in the first input, and our UV image goes in the second input. What does that mean? I'm going to scoot this on over and make a little more room. Well, what that means is our first image goes up, our input image goes on the top input, our UV map goes on the second input. And now we have this distortion map. And the even cooler thing about that is if we lock this texture operator, uh, we don't need any of this stoner anymore. The stoner actually, uh, if we turn off that view there, right? We can see that's still cooking away because it's still got an input. We can even disconnect this since this is locked down here, right? Our stoner costs us zero milliseconds right now. This is not costing us a single thing. And if we take a look over here, how we've remapped, right, our remapping of this input image is based off of this UV map and its description of what's got to happen in this 2D coordinate space or this 2D pixel space to affect that transformation. So this is a really cheap way to be able to uh, get away with essentially all of the corner pinning, warping, uh, and conventions that you get with Stoner without having to go through the process of figuring out how to make it more efficient. So there, there is, I should point out, a couple little wobbles to this. We can see here that our UV map has got uh, some nice strong edges. It's because it's not anti-aliased. And we can see, if we get real close here, that we have some similar kind of jaggies that show up here in our image. Now, that might not be tolerable for you. And a way around that is to add an anti-alias top after the fact, and this will help get rid of some of those jaggies. We still have, you know, imperfect edges, but this is considerably better than what we've got over here. And depending on how much deformation you've got going on, uh, this might be more than enough to kind of get you, uh, get away with the things that you need to do for a particular project. Okay, so that tackles what on earth is this remap image. Great. Excellent. Now, you know, more than that, I want to know what on earth is this parameter down here and uh, like just what gives. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just delete all those things for just a hot second. I'm going to add a new base component here. 
to my network, and then I'm going to go ahead and call this channel 001, chan 001. Now, here I'm actually going to, in stoner, I'm going to point to base underscore chan 001. Okay, all of a sudden I have inputs and outputs. If I take a peek inside here, I'll see all of the exact same bits that were over here inside of this project kind of template. Okay, well, what, what gives? Well, what's going on here is this now holds all of the keys, offsets, and transformation uh, pieces that I need to be able to reconstruct what's happening in Stoner. But it's, in fact, only using this UV uh, remap method for actually doing the distortion. So let's go ahead and hook up a null so we can see what that looks like. Right, great. So we should see, let's get a little closer here. We're going to go ahead and grab this corner and scooch it up. Great, we'll scoot, scooch this down. And if we move out of our network, we can see nothing's happened. Uh, you know, all the more reason why I don't understand what's going on and why this is broken. Well, there is a very handy little uh, piece of information that we're missing here, which is that in order for this to work correctly, we need to actually be able to see, at least temporarily, the uh, output uh, remap texture from our stoner over here. So we should, if we turn that interface back on, right? So I move this around, and I can see the transformation happen down here. Now, that becomes more interesting, right? Let's go ahead and copy paste. I'm going to move this one down just a little bit more. I'm going to give myself a different movie here. Movie three, sure, great. Now up here in my stoner, I'm going to change this from instead of pointing to Chan 1, I'm going to point to Chan 3, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my corners. Oops, oh, bother, not Chan 3, Chan 2, pardon me. I'm going to look at Chan 2, Chan 2, and I'm going to manipulate this image a little bit, and we can see that now I only have one stoner in my network. But I'm able to effectively create multiple channels uh, or multiple distortion maps. And once I'm done with all this, if I turn off the viewers for those, now the only thing that's costing me anything is actually uh, these two bases instead. And we've got a dramatically smaller cook time, oh my goodness, here uh, with this method instead.